You're live. Right now. Yes. We are live. <laughs> Welcome all you live humans. <laughs> this is Unity of Springfield and Paul Day. And today we have talking Teresa Mezcua and really looking forward to it. I just wanted um, everybody here and everybody online or listening to this later, let's just start out by closing our eyes and taking a deep breath. <sighs> giving thanks, gratitude for having the health to be here now and for being present this very moment and for sharing together physically or online and to know that we are one. We are always one no matter the situation, no matter the situation. You are loved and you are always appreciated. And with that, a big deep breath. Welcome back and welcome here. <laughs> and take it away, Teresa. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm going to share with you uh, this book, is The Universe is Calling by Eric Butterworth. If you notice, this book is really, really old, <laughs> and it was because um, I was trying to share with you today uh, a book from Don Miguel Ruiz, and it was the um, uh, Master of Love, or, but I have another one, is The Master of Self. And when Brandy uh, called and uh, texted me and asked me which one it was the one that I'm going to share, I get all messed up because I'm pretty sure that I already uh, shared with you the other one. <laughs> so I was not sure which one. So I was like, okay. So, and then I looked this one. It was next to my bed. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. So I start reading this. And I think this, we have a class with Kenneth or I read with him or something because, uh, but today make me, a lot of sense different so I really appreciate that I can uh, have the time to read this again and I'm gonna share just you know a little bit of my points of view with you and um, in the introduction it say that uh, this book is uh, it, he distinguished between the religion the Jesus taught as a teacher and the religion about Jesus where Jesus is seen like a God and that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, you know, I grew up with a, as a Catholic, and for me, until I found unity, that's what I was thinking, you know, that Jesus was God. And then say, the word consciousness means awareness. Everything that happens in your life starts in your consciousness. By changing your consciousness, we can change what happened in your life. So that's kind of like the introduction to talk about these three words, is consciousness, meditation, and affirmation. Then meditation is reflecting the silence of the source of all mind, all life, all substance, substance that is present within us. Meditation is a way of getting ourselves focused in the divine. And then affirmation is accepting the truth of the omnipresence and the ever presence of the good you desire, laying claim to it by a word of the truth that say yes to the, to life. The universe is calling may lead you into unfamiliar trails in your quest. Go forward in the spirit of adventure. You have nothing to lose but illness. And let me tell you that when I read this book the first time, I, I don't think I get a lot of sense of this, but, um, you know, when I, because I grow and, and grandma teach me all these things, but for some reason I always fight in my head a lot of things, and I didn't know why. I just feel so bad because I, I didn't agree with, you know, whatever the teacher was. So when I started reading Eric by the word, it was like, oh my gosh, there's someone different, you know, that's something that, it, this is make sense to me. And I want to share something that he, he write that uh, 
for me, it was kind of like a hot moment and um, because, you know, I always, because people always tell you, oh, you have to meditate, you know, you have to meditate. But when I heard the word meditation, I didn't have an idea what it was. You know, I just, well, what is meditate? You know, I was thinking about prayer and you know, everything. But what, it, and then in this book, and he, I'm going to share these words with him. And I, I mean, if you want to do it with me, that, that, that's awesome. And it says, sit with me. Close your eyes. Image that the earth disappears from be, beneath us. And we are in space. With the moon and the sun looming large before us. And the moon disappears. And again, the sun disappears. Now, we are deep into outer space, in a gray valley of the universe. We are within a canopy of stars around us in all sides. And they appear to be sending their Shots of light, especially to us, like supporting hands of the universe. Rest for a while in this image and feel the universe, universe rushing, streaming, and pouring into you from all sides while you sit quietly. This is meditation. And that helped me a lot when I read this because then I can close my eyes and I can feel, you know, the energy, the space. Because before that, I just, I just want to do it. I just want to meditate. But like I told you before, I didn't have an idea. When, when, the, when I read this book and I start closing my eyes, then I start feeling you know, in the um, darkness, that love, that energy. And it was really just for, you know, reading that page. So I just, I was so grateful. And after that, I just, you know, that's the way that, I don't know if somebody meditate different, but that's the way that I, when I close my eyes, I try to feel that love, the, that, you know, the whatever it is that is in the universe energy or whatever so I just I know I, I really like it and it has uh, you know I think like 10 chapters so I'm just going to talk a little bit about each of them the first one is a short history about prayer and, okay. okay early people worship the earth the sky stick and stones when we look at these, we are seeing a consciousness from which others evolve. From our Christianity or Jesus background, we have used the word pagan to mean not believer, coming from a feeling that my God is the only God. And anyone who believes in any other God is stupid, is a not believer. So, um... You know, when I started reading The Universe is Calling, and then I feel like I was part of something that it was, you know, because before I was feeling so bad because I didn't believe what, you know, my family teach me or whatever, but now it's like, okay, that's something else. That's this God, this, and, and you know, and later on it's going to talk about that we all have our God. And that makes me feel so, so good because uh, I don't have to believe in other people's God. Um, traditional religion teach us to pray to God that is outside. If God says we are worthy, we get what we ask for. But if we don't get what we ask for, it's because we're not worthy. And you know what? I get a lot of years of my life stuck in this because I remember that I pray for this and I pray for that and I was like most, you know, like asking for things that never happened. So 
I was thinking that God didn't love me because I never get an answer. So then later on in this book, they tell us why. The Native Americans approach prayer as, as an embrace of the universe with a subconscious understanding of the wholeness and connected of everything. In religion, there are individuals labeled as a holy man, the medicine man, the priest, the cleary. Religions say that these people can take, they can take care of us, but in true, another person cannot breathe for you. And uh, you know what, that's kind of like really interesting for me because uh, like I tell you, uh, I always have this um, fighting in my, when I went to church, I remember that when they say something, you know, in the altar or whatever, I always was fighting here. So I feel so bad when, you, when they say that, you know, God is going to punish us and we are sinners and we born sinners. And, and I remember that I, I think that I, I once, I was in the school, it was a little kid, and I say, well, you say that I'm a sinner because I born like that. But when the, this happened, I was not born. I mean, why I should be guilty for this? You know, things like that. And, and then that the teacher was, they, I remember that they take me out of the classroom and talk to me outside. And, you know, so, but it's like, okay, this is not going to work for me. And, and I, I, I don't think I've never had like a really good relationship with priests because of that. Because I always talk and ask questions and you know well the, the last time that I talked to a priest it was when Tanya was a little baby my daughter and I was so confused and I was asking why why she has a disability why why you know and their answer because I didn't have a good <laughs> relationship with them I don't think that he was a bad person it's just uh, whatever but the answer was it's because you're a sinner yeah, and I was like, what? So, you know, so at that time, I remember that, that I was the, the last time that I went to church, you know, and so I was like, no. And he didn't have any other answer, but that was me because I remember that. I, I mean, now I can understand that I was because I always ask questions. I always find whatever they say. So, of course, <laughs> when I have a question, he answered me the same way that I probably I will answer him. And, and then it say that uh, prayer is an individual experience. Prayers might help create an environment in which we, you can release your own inner power. In the end, the responsibility for release is yours. And the other thing that, um, the, you know, I remember that prayer for me was risk. I don't know. So I don't know how to pronounce this, but recitating prayer, you know, like saying things over and over. And um, I remember that uh, one thing that I was, you know, I, was, I, I know that I'm super smart or whatever, but I remember that that was the, the way that I pray. And you have to pray like that. And this is the, the way that you pray. But once I remember that I was thinking and I was like, okay, if I have to pray, see, I mean, if I pray, like if I'm talking to God, I'm not going to go with my friend and I'm going to say, oh, hi, I'm Teresa, I'm from Mexico, I'm, you know, I love unity, blah, 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 whatever. And then, okay, bye. And then the next day, I'm going to see my friend again and I say, hi, I'm Teresa, I'm from Mexico, I'm from, you know, like, so that was not the way that I was supposed to talk to God, right? So, you, you know, all these things was in my mind and, and I didn't have an answer at that time until I get here to unity. So, okay, we're talking about prayer. We are, we all have our own personal concept of God. We just need to discover ourselves as, as an individual expression of the universe. We don't discover God in worship at church. God is in ourself. You do not leave God in the sanctuary. God you take God with you. And you know, when, when I start realizing this, is that every cell of my body is God. 
you know, and I know that it's really, you know, like, sounds really weird when you say, I am God, but um, like to say that, that not, not all that I am, I mean, all that I am is God. So, um, but as you know, that's I, I love that. You know, I just love that that I I can I have God inside of me. I don't have to go somewhere else to find Him. When we get a great perception of our relationship with the universe, there is no one to pray to, only a universal flow to get into a spiritual energy to pray from. There is a secret place at the heart of us where the Father and I are one. And um, like I tell you before, you know, like um, thinking about if God is inside of me, and so the way that I can pray is just, you know, thinking about what is the best for me, that's my point of view. And, you know, and talk, think, about positive things, that, that's the thing that I, I, I'm practicing as a prayer. Prayer is the secret door to the cosmic power of consciousness, root in here and now. Prayer is an experience of our own God potential. We pray from a consciousness of God, conditioning ourselves with that activity of God. Um, and you know what, like, if we are, um, if we are God, so I think that, you know, like, act, act like God. And, you know, it's really difficult sometimes. We have the, you know, situations in life that sometimes, you know, I don't, I, I don't act like God, you know. But I kind of, like, think that it's kind of, like, be the best of me. <clears throat> Uh, and, you know, what I, I ask myself sometimes is how God we act in this situation, if it's possible for me to do it. And then chapter two in this, in the book, is the miracle trap. And they say prayer is confused with the effort to work miracles, but there are no miracles in science and there are no miracles in God. And that kind of surprised me at first because, you know, like that, um, I have the saying all the time, well, it, it could be a miracle. You know, this is really difficult, but it could be a miracle. So, and when I read this, it was kind of like, wow. And, but it, it makes sense, you know, when it say God does not deal with miracles. God is the wholeness of life, substance, and intelligence that is always present. It is not a miracle that is need ever but the discipline of consciousness to let the kingdom come thy will be done on earth as is in heaven so what I got about this is that there is a divine order you know sometimes we ask for things but this thing doesn't come because the truth it was not good for me I think and then God cannot do more for you than he can do through you. In some way, you have participate in the problem that might be manifesting itself in your life. You must participate in the solution by changing your consciousness. And in this paragraph, I put ouch. Because, <laughs> because you know, like... Um, I think the whole book and my point of view is that Eric Butterworth wants to let us know to take responsibility for everything. Because what happened in my life, it's my responsibility. It's not, but it's, well, for me, it was really easy to blame other people. Well, it's because the government and it's my mom and I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> or, you know, so it's like whatever, you know, like, but it's, it's that's, that's, that is true. It's, it's me. A miracle is defined as a violation of the law of nature. The truth is that there is no violation of the natural laws. Everything has a perfect natural cause. cause. Everything has a divine order. It is important to know that Jesus clearly said, He who believes in me, we also do the work I do. 
in greater works than these will be due. It is John 14, 12. While everyone was calling his healings miracles, Jesus called them the, his work. He knew and practiced the healing art because he understood the mental and spiritual laws governing healing. When Jesus say, he who believes in me, he means anyone who believes in he or her own wholeness. From that point of wholeness, all things are possible. And again, you know, we take responsibility, like, um, you know, that kind of opened my mind to see that uh, um, I can do what I want to do or I want to do or I need to do if I work on that. That's not going to be a miracle. So, again, and then to say that we pray for miracles from outside ourselves because we don't want to take responsibility. If we love, if we love and take care of ourselves, we will be healthy in mind, body, and spirit. Don't expect miracles. The tremendous power of heal, prosper, and adjust is in our in ourselves. And when we work with divine law from the highest perspective, that we think that unusual become natural. To take charge will with the willingness to be part of the solution to change. You can do great great things. And again, it's going back to ourselves, you know, take charge. There are no miracles, but the discipline application of the divine love, the steady effort to God. And yeah, that's kind of take responsibility. And in the chapter three, what about karma? And you know what? It's, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot of things, but I just write that uh, what I truly believe is about karma is that what you give, you receive. You know, it's like, uh, I don't think that karma is good or bad, or it's kind of like a punish thing or whatever. It's just like a bank account. Whatever I put in the bank account, that's what I'm gonna get it. And um, I have this uh, little experience. Uh, I, was, I was driving and, um, and you know what, it, I was driving and I, it, it was not on purpose that uh, I was talking with my daughter. <laughs> so I get distracted and then it was this uh, big truck. So what I did, because the, 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 you know, the road was ending and I have to go to one lane only. So I go like kind of fast and this poor guy had to bro you know, break like eh, almost, you know, so it was kind of my fault. <laughs> And, okay, so that happens, and I was like, oh my gosh, well, I made it, whatever. So it was like, I don't know, two, three weeks after that, guess what? That happens to me. The same thing. <laughs> it was a big truck. I was driving, and then this guy, I don't know what happened, but he, I don't know, he, I don't know what he was thinking, but she get in front of me, and I have to break, and ah! So, and I was really pissed, you know, and I was like, what is he thinking, blah, blah, blah. And then I remember, hey, you did the same thing, girl. So this is not a bad or good. It's just, you know, karma. <laughs> so, but it's, you know, and, you know, a lot of other things that I, I, I think that karma, is, because, you know, some, I remember one of my friends say once, uh, something happens, and then she say something about, oh, but there's karma, you know, like, no, and I, and, and I explained to her, I don't think that's kind of like a punish, because it, we all, what I talked to her is, we just changed it from, you know, the Catholic, and now we don't say it's going to punish God, God is going to punish you, but we say, oh, there's karma, you know, so it's like, no, well, that's my point of view. Okay, and then, you know, and then karma goes to the law of reincarnation. It's a cosmic plane in which an individual is a continuous succession of the lifetimes through which it's possible to attain perfection in God. And uh, that's, you know, it comes 
with karma and they say that karma is a perfect balance. So what I got about this um, part is that uh, who believe in, in, you know, in reincarnation is that, uh, is that, okay, we have this life, we try our best, but we didn't, I don't know, we didn't probably get to where we have to be and then we die and then we come back and then we continue in the path until we, we obtain success. That, that's what I, I understand about that. We attract what we put attention on. Every condition in your present life is a result of your consciousness. The universe and everything in it is whole. And um, we all can see instance when there is seems, uh, you know, situation that we see that is injustice and, you know, but what Eric Bart was saying in the book is because we are dealing with the whole consciousness. We are, um, you know, we are love unconditional. Uh, God will never stop loving us, but sometimes we stop loving ourselves. And, you know, I was thinking about this time of the pandemic in I don't know if you noticed or not, but I believe that for some times when they close, when they shoot down everything, we all leave, or the majority of us, we live in fear. And if you talk to someone, or if, and it was all about the pandemic and the virus and this and that, and then we, you don't have to go outside, you don't have to touch it. So it was kind of like really, at that time I remember that um, it was feel like everybody was feeling uh, or you talk to someone and everybody that I was talking to, it was feeling like fear and everything was wrong. And so it was like, I don't know, it was so weird. And when he talked about, you know, the whole and, you know, the whole consciousness, I was thinking about that situation that, yeah, we can make this, you know, if we all live in fear, then of course it, it's going to happen things that in the whole world that probably can be, you know, for this energy uh, I'm not sure how to explain it 100%, but then he say that we can do the opposite, right? You know, and it happens, you know, when some people go to these places or cities that there are a lot of crime and then they pray all together and they form this consciousness, this different consciousness, this energy, then things change. So I, I believe that that was pretty cool, you know, like, so we can, you know, change that part. And then in uh, chapter 4 is uh, talking about grace. They say the word grace means favor. Living in a state of grace can means living in discipline, awareness of the divine flow. God's flow is constant. Um, what I was thinking about grace is because what, when I grew up, I just, you know, hear a lot of things like that. Oh, it's because God has grace for these people or that situation or whatever and what anybody would say is that uh, grace is for all of us uh, let me see what well, what it's kind of like uh, the same thing that he was saying before uh, we all have, live in grace is just our responsibility to feel that way and um I don't think that God has these people, your preference for these people or that people or whatever. It's more about how I am feeling about it. And if I feel in grace, I'll live in grace. Um, and then chapter 5 is, is about the cosmic counterpart. And I love this part. We use prayer to try to overcome unwanted conditions. We use the prayers of supplication, but Jesus said that our fathers know what we need before we ask. So claim your good. Become centered in God. I am, an, I am an extension of God. If it is true, I am wholeness. All prayers are answered at the level of our consciousness. Prayers that does not reveal do, do not relieve us from our responsibility. Like I tell you, the whole book is, the, for me, is talking about responsibility. 
Whatever we are, God is. Whatever I am, God is. And I am. When we were told that we are creators of God in me, sorry, when we were told that we are created of God's image, it means that we are perfect in wholeness. So, you know, like, uh, in this part, I think that he, Eddie Butterworth is talking about, you know, the affirmations, to know, to feel, to understand, to claim who we are, and we are good, we are whole, we are part of God. And then in chapter number six is let go and let God. One of the most important errors to unlearn is that if we have to belong that we have to belong to a church to know God why we can have why we cannot have a first hand experience with God we can pursue the spiritual path pursue we can pursue the spiritual path in working towards through prayer is not conditioned God to your needs but condition your needs to the activity of God And um, God is as present as you. You know what? The, the, I was thinking about this like a, with a really hard responsibility. If God is as present as me, so at least I have to do my best in every situation. Because, I, I mean, God is as present, you know, through me. Uh, I don't know. It's just, you know, I when I was reading this book, I kind of take like a lot of responsibility for a lot of other things that I didn't know before. Oh, probably I know, but I didn't get it like really deep like this time. Let go and let God means to think differently. If you want to be healthy, stop thinking about your sickness. If you want to be successful, stop thinking about your failures. We can, we call this discipline in letting go of the attachment of the past. Fails, beliefs, fears, and idea of lack and limitation. Traditional medicine may do not, may do a, okay, it's talking about the traditional medicine, do may, may do a pretty good job curing your symptoms, but only you can be healed by making a concrete effort, a mental house cleaning to, consci to consciously letting go and letting God. And, you know, I want to share you that, uh, you know, it talks about, you know, that a doctor can give you, if you have a headache, the doctor can give you an aspirin, but that's it, right? And I'm going to share you that um, for so many years, I have migraines, migraines, and um, I didn't know. I just, you know, I live with them and take this medicine, and, uh, and I remember that one day when I started going to Al-Anon, and I... Um, I kind of learned that I cannot change people, you know? That at that time, my migraines go away, and I don't need any medicine at all. <laughs> that simple, you know? So it's like, and so when I was thinking about that, and that's true, you know, and I, 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 I'm not uh, against the medicine or whatever. No, I think they do their best, but the truth is that whatever I have, it have to, ha it have to come from a root. You know, something that I need to work on that. Something that I, I, I need to find out and work on that. And so it's like, okay, if I, like right now, um, I, the doctor say, and I say the doctor say, that I have high pressure. And I'm working on that. Because I know there's something that I, I don't know, I'm blocking. And, uh, but I, I, I just, you know, try to, again, be go inside and see what's going on with me and and see if I can help myself. And then chapter seven, it's say the way of silence. And then silence means turning within, touching the deep of your inner self to reach the point where God is manifesting as you. It is good to have a special time and place to engage in the silence time, but you can have silence time anywhere at any time. 
And then I like this technique, and I just put it here, and I want to share it to you. He say that a simple technique that is very effective is when you breathe in, and then you can say, that is. And then when you breathe out, and then you say, I am. And this is kind of like really helpful when you are stressing or you want to go to the silence. And um, in chapter A, it talks about affirmation and treatment. One power affirmation is when Jesus say, I am the light of the world. He was not referring to himself, that he was not, uh, that he was God, you know, like, like a lot of other traditions, uh, religion traditions say. He was just affirming the truth. We all are the light of the world. By saying I am, we are studying the truth, but also everyone's truth. Affirmations help to let go of negativity and to claim our good, saying yes to life. We practice, you can simply close your eyes and go right into the consciousness of oneness and experience communion with God. God love you. When you understand prayer, it seems very natural to affirm for yourself, God is my life. I am, an, I, am, I am an expression of God, and thus perfect life is my heritage. I accept, a percent, I accept a perfect life as my life. I know that every cell and organ and function of my body temple is an animate and renege the God's perfect life. Again, if we are part of life, we have all this with us. And then in chapter 9, he talks about the great amen. Amen is the most powerful word in our language. Amen's amen or amen, amen, means this is true. As soon as you unite your thoughts with your amen, with feeling, you give it the full power in your mental acceptance. When you say amen to that which is good, you put your mental and spiritual acceptance on it. We should not pray about our fears and concerns and then say amen, because this is the placing, this is placing your mental and spiritual acceptance on what you don't want as a true. If someone says something negative to you and you accept them as a true, you give them power over your life. In a way, you make them a, you make you make them God. It is like you are saying amen to someone else's opinion. And you know what? Like uh, I like I was telling before. Uh, I think that now that I'm in unity, I can get power of myself because before, whatever other people say about me, that was kind of like true. And I feel so, so, so bad. Like, you know, what this priest said that uh, I was a sinner, that's what I have a girl with disability, that I know that is my best gift ever. And she come to teach me a lot of things that I've learned. I change, I, you know, I become, and I mean, I live in another country and all this stuff. But if you stick with that, I think that is really uh, hurtful. Um, same thing, you know, when doctors or teachers or, you know, that something that I, I, I was remember the other day when I was reading this, and when I was a little child, I was trying to be in the, you know, like singing in the courtroom, but the teacher say something about, something about my boys. And for that, I didn't want to talk or I didn't want to, you know, like I really get that one, like really, you know, in my, of my heart and for so many years now I didn't sing now I can sing I sing in the shower it doesn't matter like <laughs> sometimes yeah and and you know I kind of find out that this is me and this is my voice and you know what like right now I do this in unity because I love I love unity, and I love these teachings, and I think I always tell you about my dreams. I love to, you know, to finish this, uh, the licensed unity teacher, because I want to do this in Spanish too. 
And because, you know, sometimes I have friends and they have questions and, and I love to share this, but unfortunately we don't have a lot of things, you know, right now in Spanish, but, um, and, you know, and somehow when I was in Unity, this, you know, horrible thought about that me not being enough, it go away. And I'm not telling that I, I have difficulties right now, you know, I have fear and things like that, but I, I overcome I just do it. It doesn't matter. I don't have to be perfect. You know that that song that um, Karen Drucker. You know, and I love it. And it's kind of of my uh, mantra, like the one they say, "I don't have to be perfect. I'm doing the best I can. I give my per myself permission to be just who I am." And and I, look at me. I'm here. <laughs> so it's like I know I'm not perfect, but I, you know, but I just love it. I love it. I just you know and. And I know that it's making a little bit of difference. And, you know, I don't have a lot, a lot of people, a lot of close friends here in Springfield that speak Spanish. But the ones that I know, they ask me questions about unity. They ask questions about this new thing, you know, instead of, uh, of course, they, you know, it was kind of difficult for me in our culture. And, you know, it's like they ask you, They, did, they didn't ask you what religion are you in. They asked you what church you go because they assume that you're Catholic. <laughs> so, and so it's like when you say, well, at first, you know, at first I was saying, oh, no, 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 I'm not Catholic because I was kind of like, you know, and a lot of people was like, oh, and they don't want to talk to you, right? So I, I don't say that anymore. I just like, you know, oh, no, I just, you know, I go to this place or I go to a um, spiritual whatever, you know, but uh, that's kind of like, but I think that I, they like it because they're asking questions, and what do you do? And I like the way that you talk, or I like your answer, or whatever, so I think that you like it or not, we're making a difference. And then in chapter 10 is how to pray for others. And this is kind of really, really hard for me, but I can change my life by changing my thoughts. Can I change someone else's life by changing my thoughts? That's a really good question for me. Why do I want to change another person? This is the great waste of human energy. This is not because people cannot change, but because change is a worth process from within the person own self. And, uh, I don't know, but before I get to unity, I want to change everybody because I was thinking that I have the solution for everything. You know, I don't know what to do with my life, but I was thinking that I was really good at that. So, and then say, the desire to change other people is a desire to make them into someone who they are not. Ouch, that hurts me. What helps is to change your thoughts about them. Don't try to set them right, but see them rightly. When you worry about a loved one, you are putting your full energy of your consciousness on the side of difficulty. You actually become part of the problem. So that was really hard. <laughs> It's especially hard for mothers. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and when I remember the first time that I read this book, I was thinking, well, it's because probably he doesn't have my life. He's different. Edit by the word, no, he doesn't know what he's saying, you know, because that's kind of justify that I don't want to change, right? That I want to still continue. And like, I think you, all you are witness about me and my daughter, you know, like going. <laughs> like a little bit, you know, far away from each other. and But that was the healthiest thing that can ever happen to both of us. You know, and at first I was not happy. I was thinking that I have to be there, that I have to change her, that she ha she needs me forever. And that was not true. You know, she's doing her best. Right now she's working. She's living in her own, you know. she, Of course she loves mommy, But at that time, I was thinking that she had to be with me. And no, of course not. It's just, you know. And uh, 
what I, you know, I, it was really hard for me to think that I was part of the problem when I was worried about her. What she's going to do. And you know what? My ego was there because I was always thinking what she's going to do without me. I mean, she's doing great without me. <laughs> so it's like, whatever, you know, but it's just, you know, you have to let it go. I have to let it go. I remember that when I started going to Unity, I went to Unity of the Hills in Branson. And, and you know, I heard all the time, you have to let it go, you have to let it go. And then I remember that I was talking to Reverend Donna and, and I tell her, but I don't know how. And she looked at me really nice in the eyes and then she say, don't worry, Teresa, you can just do it one finger at a time. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think right now we're in the four one. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but we, we're still doing, we're still, <laughs> we're still working on that. And then it say, we must let go and release your loved ones into God's grace. He can take care of them. The work to be done in you is to change your thoughts about them. When you clear your mind, you get yourself centered in God. And you know what? It's like, uh, I think that for me, I was super codependent person with everybody. You know, I think that what helped me a lot, it was al first, and then when I get to Unity and start, you know, these teachings. But I, I just want to, you know, the whole book is, for me, is talking about taking responsibility. And the other thing, the thing is that it say the universe is calling. Are you listening? In every single chapter, the universe is calling. Are you listening? And, and that's something that I want to invite you, you know, everybody, that if the universe is calling, let's listen. Because this is awesome. What I um, <coughs> notice is that, um, you know, I want to share you this before I close that. Uh, the old, uh, My car, when I turn it on, it goes to the one station. I don't remember which one. I don't like, you know, a lot of listen to radio or whatever. But it was amazed me. But amazed me that when I turn it on, the guy, the radio guy, it was talking about if you want to change your thoughts. I mean, you can change a. I mean, you can take out a negative thought and put in a positive one. So I was like, wow! In the radio, this is the first time that I heard that. But I get like really excited because yeah. You know, we're doing something, we're growing, we're waking up. So it's just, you know, I want to uh, close um, with this that it's in the book. And it say, the universe is calling, singing its song of life and love into your whole being. You are one with the divine flow. You are in tune with health and substance and love and peace. You walk and work in tune with the infinite process that turns all life of your life to good. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you. What was the name of the book? The Universe is Calling. Before we close, are there any more comments or questions for Teresa uh, before we close out this segment? I was just going to add that, you know, I love Eric too. That it was, he's wonderful, but one of the things I got from him too and, and, and from other metaphysical teachers in the idea of responsibility, Responsibility for me is the ability to respond because with these principles and understanding how these principles work, I can respond to anything using these principles and they will always work. And so that's one of the things I love that I got from him. Thank you, Wendy. And I would like to add about responsibility. I think a lot of us um, I know I did as a kid. Well, it's your responsibility. <laughs> so the responsibility is this awful thing that nobody wants to accept. Ah! 
you know, <laughs> I think facing that first and understanding we got we have a choice. Yeah. It changes the whole thing. Yep. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about what I was uh, reminded of when you talked about how you wanted to go and and spread the good news to everyone and, you know, let them join in the light. Come and walk in the light with me. It, it reminded me so much of when I first went into Al-Anon. Same kind of thing. You just like, man, you get something so good. You want, it's human nature to want to share it, but you can't. All you can do is spread the news and let them do what it, whatever they need to do with it. So, that is thank true. you. No, thank you. <laughs> Well, I think going along with that thought, beyond thinking that we can't change others, I think the key to that as well for me is that we can teach through our actions that is and what we do and give others a, a view of what can be. You're right. And I think that's the key because while letting go is really hard, letting go for others that we may love or we may know uh, is challenging for them. But ultimately, for them to see another way, they need to know another way through the actions of someone else. So I think that's where we become, that's where we become teachers, is we, we show others the way through our own actions and where we will not go as much as where we will go. Thank you. Yes, and metaphysics say that teachers teaching teachers. Thank you. Teresa, I just wanted to say that your light is beautiful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to add that you are you have this beautiful light. I went into Unity in 1985 in San Jose, California. And I remember being as high as this mountain, and that's what you're expressing right now. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I love you so much. <laughs> I think also what you're saying is quite, quite true. We, um, we look at things in our family uh, through the lens of Abraham. And she said the same thing. You cannot change other people but you can influence them with your, your, your actions. That's the true, that's the one that really clicks with me, to influence people by your own actions and thoughts. Oh, thank you so much, yes. Okay, did you assist? And kind of on that same note, um, I have found that the best way to have an inroad to influence people is through accepting where they are. And when you can, in Avatar, they call it serious drill, which there is no such thing as serious because we don't live in a serious world. We take it light and playful. And But when we accept someone and we accept, we're accepting that they are a whole being and that they have the infinite intelligence to figure it out. And so we are giving them permission to travel their path and find their way. And that opens a, a, a conscious wave that allows them to change. And we're not intentionally necessarily changing them but we're allowing them to be who they are, and that gives them the freedom to find out who they are. I think that's true, love. Yeah. We'll Thank one you. more comment here, then we've got to. I'll just say an example of all of this. When Don and I were getting married, um, um, mom, mom and dad and two of my sisters came uh, to New Mexico to, to be at the wedding. And, my, and I have a sister who most of my family deal with um, food uh, problems and her, she was doing really major anorexia then. And normally when I get with her, I'm, oh, I'm working so hard to tell her the right thing to save her life, you know. I was just too busy being happy. I was just too busy getting married and being happy and having a great time. And when she left, she said, 
thank you so much, Wendy, for what you, what you did for me. She said, I've started eating again, and, I, and I'm going. I didn't do anything. <laughs> I never did anything. Just let it be, yeah. Well, thank you so Aren't much. Aren't we so excited and yeah. glad that we have Teresa here yeah. for us? <laughs> oh. so, you want to do the announcements, Teresa? <laughs> <laughs> Um, really, just a couple things. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. It's so great to have so many smiling faces here again. I just love that. And the money, too. The money, <laughs> yeah, the money too. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we have, in that manner, yeah, we, I do have to say something about the funds. We do have a basket back there. Um, we do love the funding. Obviously, we uh, thrive on um, the support from all of you and from all of you out there and for all that do show up and participate. We do so many things at Unity of Springfield. We give in so many ways and uh, if you want to experience that, come on in and uh, join some of those things and participate because we are thriving. We really are thriving and it's a wonderful community here. Amen. Yay. <laughs> um, the other, and that's what I did want to say, besides all the other things that are going on in churches, next Sunday we do have Don Fredrickson giving awesome. uh, our talk. And so I'm really anxious to hear myself, because I, I haven't, I wasn't here when Don spoke before, and I just love Don. And uh, I think we all love Don. Yes. <laughs> but he's going to be giving, you. oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be giving a talk on <laughs> affirmations as an alternative to meditation. And so uh, that's something that really interests mm -hmm. me a lot and uh, probably interests you too. So show up next Sunday at uh, 9.15 and uh, we'll let it go at that. We're going to join in a circle at the back here. And uh, again, thank you all so much for coming.